back in 2022, you were only doing personal content platforms. So what made you start filming for studios? Oh my God, yeah. I yeah. was a little, little baby. Little I baby was a little s- baby. Yeah. Now I'm like a big s- yeah. yeah. You hadn't come in your full s- yet. Yeah, I got better extensions. I got a spray tan. I like fully entered. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like I just wanted to like i don't know there was like not really like a big overarching re- or uh, there wasn't a big overarching reason psych i'm lying i started seeing like a bunch of vixen promo and i was like this looks super cool like mm-hmm. i want to get into like major productions that like i just can't afford myself or like yeah. i don't want to pay for it myself yeah and i also want to hang out with my friends yeah i think i also saw like what was it it was like ricky's resort or like project dtf it was like a project by ricky johnson a long time ago which was like a reality tv show Mm -hmm. where everyone was like and i was like wait actually this looks kind of cool yeah i feel like i also just wanted to feel like a real star yeah i'm like now i'm a real yeah you can't you're not just a content creator yeah shut up i did it (laughs) (laughs) because yeah back back then you said you'd maybe film one scene for browsers that's what you said how silly of me oh my god and now i've done like four scenes for browsers yeah so is it safe to say that filming mainstream was much different than what you expected yeah yeah for sure like i remember when i first got into this whole thing there was like this whole stupid discussion between like you're not a star you're like a content creator yep yeah they are different Mm -hmm. they're like so much more different one of them takes like 30 minutes and one of them takes like 16 billion hours um and one of them has like a makeup artist and sometimes the makeup artist gives you a little straw and then the rest is like you fending for yourself yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like both like i like doing my own content creation because i'm choosing my own talent i'm choosing a location it's within the comfort and confines of everything that i already want to do mm-hmm. whereas like mainstream can be like a little s- surprise like mm-hmm. like mainstream was like a box of chocolates mm-hmm. were there any chocolates in there that like you didn't want but you had to eat because you were already on set I ate all the chocolate, yeah. (laughs) I liked all of it. But I came into mainstream already, like, with a huge platform, already very financially stable, and already doing pretty much the top companies. I did Vixen, I did Brazzers, I did Erica Less, which we'll Mm -hmm. talk about. So all my experiences were really great because I was only agreeing to things I really wanted to do. Yeah. Because the day rate for any mainstream is only a fraction of what I'm already making on my own platforms. Mm -hmm. So I felt like... All the things I was doing was because I was doing it super fulfilled by the creative, like, mission. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people who do really well on their own content platforms often say that the reason that they shoot for studios is just, like, the traffic and the new members. Like, it's not for the, the, day, the day rate. Actually, I feel like doing mainstream really killed my money on actually. Really? Because now, I mean, obviously, you could always Google my, my plan. Mm-hmm. Um, but now... Like, but those, but those things were always leaks. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, you could Google like an HD scene of mine. Mm -hmm. Like the traffic that comes directly to my sites are people who just really with me as a person and Mm -hmm. like really want to directly support me, the artist. Um, So I would actually say like doing mainstream didn't really help me in terms of exposure because it's just, it's a beast that you could no longer control. Whereas yeah. like, honestly, I could get just as much, ex- just as much exposure doing a podcast like this mm-hmm. or like doing a TikTok or doing like a viral YouTube video. And I feel like I've gotten a lot more fans directly from your podcast than I have from like a browser scene, actually. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Browser, did you hear that? Whee! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Holly Randall's fans <laughs> and Patreon. <laughs> um, so does that make you like kind of second guessed your choice to do studio or are you still glad you did it i didn't do it for the money and i didn't do it for the exposure i kind of just did it for the fun experience um like for example i just did my first my first dp i could have definitely and i will definitely have my first dp on my own, mm-hmm. but i wanted my first one to be in a super cool controlled setting and i wanted like as many people to to it for as long as humanly possible Mm -hmm. um i feel like my overarching goal is to just have everyone in the world get a by me oh my god you're such a generous spirit i know i know i feel like i'm like you know like how superman like his like one issue is that he can't be superman everywhere he's only one man yeah he's not superman i'm like super like i wish i could everyone in the whole wide world but 
I just got three holes. I so know, but you know, you're still young. So I do. And there's there's time. Yeah. <laughs> there's and, time. You know, with vir- with like virtual reality and like the metaverse. Who knows? I'm scared of AI. I've had every company in the world approach me to do AI stuff. And I just don't know. I, don't I get know it. Yet. You have a lot of reasons to be apprehensive about it, especially in cases where people are asking you. You have to be really careful with like the contract and what they're asking you to sign away. Because there have been some companies, just regular like shoot companies, not anyone that you've shot for, Mm -hmm. that have been sneaking AI clauses into the contracts. Oopsie daisy. Saying that by signing this model release, which is a standard model release that you're used to signing, you are like granting them like the ability to use your content for AI in perpetuity. Oh, yuck. bullshit. Boo. Yeah. I'm not afraid of AI because personally for me, I feel like AI is like, just a different like niche just like like hentai or mm-hmm. like super cgi anyways mm-hmm. i feel like there's a different audience for it i don't think it's ever going to replace the parasocial relationship of me being a little head on the internet is yeah though. i don't think like ai could create that yeah yet and don't try but it's it. also like it's so it's interesting to see where that goes because even if ai gets really good right people are always still going to know that they're talking to a computer. And is that going to matter to people or not? Yeah, I feel like it's going to not matter to like a really small segment of people because there's already super realistic calls. Yeah. There's also super realistic ways to change like anyone's voice to sound like your voice. Mm -hmm. I think people still consciously choose like, I want to follow the the journey of like this real person. Mm -hmm. I want to like relate to them in some way. So I feel like I'm, I'm safe for now. And there's also pre there's also probably people who would maybe prefer to talk to a machine because they're afraid of actual real human interactions. And if they're like conversing with a not real person, then they don't have to worry about like what someone thinks of them because it's literally not a person. So yeah. Anything of and also it's like you couldn't even think about it like a lot of girls on do have like a chatter chatting for yeah. them. And I think a lot of people that are fans already know that. They like, know it's that like, and they're there's just like, like but there has to be a believable sense of this sense of suspension of belief yeah. to be like, okay, but maybe I'm not. Maybe yeah. I'm talking to a real girl and at least I know that the money that I'm giving her goes directly to that girl. Right. And she's still making content for yeah. me, which is a form of labor. And if you're not talking to her directly, you're still talking to a person. Yeah. It's not a machine. You might be a little dude in India, but it's still a dude, you know? Still somebody. We're, we're stimulating You're still having that human connection. Yeah, <laughs> and that matters. But you're still buying my p- Yeah. Which is my p- yeah. Or or mouth. Yeah. And more. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year-long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.